I love to share this design studio mm -hmm. because they're actually becoming really rare. The idea of having an atelier where you actually work with pattern makers and on forms and everything is in 3D and not just flat, it's unusual. Mm -hmm. And there's fewer and fewer in New York City now. You've been such an advocate of manufacturing locally, in fact, here in New York, and have been passionate about that throughout the trajectory of your business. Why is that so important to you, and how has it impacted the way that you've been able to grow and scale? Local manufacturing means a lot to me because it was how I built my business. Because we had all these small factories in the garment center, I was able to start a business with like a $5,000 loan from my dad. I had a small shop in the East Village and every morning I would come up on the subway and drop things off at the factories or go visit them and see how things were going. So I would start maybe by cutting 30 of something and eventually it grew and grew and grew and I have factories now that can handle in the thousands per style, which it's really wonderful to have that opportunity. If you want to pop into my office, we started a fitting. So we do all of the fittings in my office and the runway. Mm -hmm. So it's like for runway, there's like 20 people in this office. Wow. So Natalie is our fit model. Natalie's been fitting for me for like 15 years. This is a top we run a lot. I don't like the top stitch and the seams look kind of lumpy. We got to find a way to make it look neater. We could top stitch up this way instead of this weird thing if we have to top oh, stitch oh, around so the neck edge. Here, yeah, that, that looks bad. That be nice. right? But you need the top stitch to hold the facing in place, right? Uh, it would be nice. Okay, so then we'll go it's up clean. the strap. Take the pleat out of the back strap. See, the same mm -hmm. top that you do over and over and over again needs to be uh -huh. refitted for every fabric. It's amazing. So you, it's like, yeah, nothing's ever easy. <laughs> In your, your early days, you began to get some great momentum around your business, some great small successes, but you also talk about a moment in those early days where you nearly lost it all, where you nearly went into complete debt. Describe that time in your business and how you navigated through it. It was really interesting because when we first had our first trade show, which was kind of a landmark for the company, we sold $250,000 in merchandise in three days, which we didn't expect. And I went to my father and I said, I need money to manufacture it. So he mortgaged his house and gave me the money. And for like three seasons, we were like turning over the money, giving it back to him, borrowing it when we needed it. By the fourth season, I was spending more than I was making and I couldn't pay him back. So it became about a five year struggle to get the money paid back to my father and to build the business to where it was profitable. That was really scary, especially going home for the holidays when the whole family knew that I might lose the family house, but we got through it. I mean, I knew that the only way to pay back that kind of money was by hanging on to the business and by making it profitable. It was, it was terrifying. talked about um, that one of your approaches into your business is to think small, uh, to take measured approaches, which is often counterintuitive for, for entrepreneurs when we talk about having a big vision. Describe that philosophy and, and how it played out in your career. If I started to think too much about what it could be and how big it could grow, it's overwhelming. So I have to compartmentalize and think of and you know one small chunk at a time. Um, the times where I think we've made big steps and, and stepped out, it has been not always as successful as you want it, like opening a very you know expensive store. It's, things like that have not always worked out. So I think that the best way for me to approach business is one small step at a time. I was always sort of dreaming of something bigger, but I knew I had to stay focused on the small things around it and eventually the business took off and grew from there, but I, I find that it's kind of terrifying to think too big. This is one of our most popular resort pieces. Somebody can wear this as a mini or you could wear it over leggings. Yeah. So it's got a lot of versatility for that time of year. So this is our design area. Maddie's working up a print. That looks nice where you have a little bit of the asymmetry in there. Yeah. You forget that all these thousands of decisions that have to go in. Oh my God, thousands. You know, it's <laughs> into crazy. that. What's been one of the toughest entrepreneurial lessons that you've had to learn, probably the hard way, in building this great business? Going into the recession was difficult, and learning how to scale back, I think, is one of the hardest lessons. It came time to like say, okay, we've got to work on who our brand is, focus on who our customer is address her because I think I had sort of stepped away from my core customer 
and disappointed her a little bit. Lengths got too short. We were getting like different directives from everywhere and I was trying to figure out which one to follow. But in the end, we circled back to our core customer who is a woman who is powerful and the life of the party, but she goes to work and she needs to dress for a lifestyle that includes everything from having weekend wear and, and having a great time on the weekends, but also getting up in the morning, putting on something that you can wear to work and then having that last you through the entire day. It's just a matter of making sure you stay focused on what people want and what you do best. So how do you not take feedback personally, particularly when you're in a business that is often subjective, where you are, are often setting yourself up to criticism? I really like to listen to what my customer has to tell me. And I spend a lot of time in my stores listening to what my managers have to tell me about the clothing and the customer. So it's hard for me not to take it personally because I feel like I'm personally the only one who can really make it right or, or create this, these things that women want, so I don't really think I can separate myself from that. You had your daughter, Violet, in your late 30s, and you've been very candid in saying that you wish someone had pushed you to start your family sooner. Why, why is that, and what advice would you give to other women who, who have big jobs and big careers? I would say that having a family is really one of the most important things in life. I don't want to say it's not as important as a career because I've always felt blessed that I've had both but it was really a struggle to have her. And I went through a lot of grief and a lot of hard times and I really, I advise all the young women who work for me that you know exactly what year they need to start trying and it's okay, you'll work it out. If you're smart and you love your work, you'll find a way to manage both.